Now that we get Otani Yamamoto out of the way, I've been dying to do a Greg's list of the best available free agents. And I don't want to do it in terms of like who's uh, the most valuable, financially efficient age. No. Who is the best free agent for your baseball team for 2024? Who will have the best 2024 season among the remaining free agents? So here now, my Greg's list. Uh, at number nine, I am a huge fan of Jordan Hicks. He's 27 years old. His K per nine had a huge uptick. He's now over 11 K per nine. He threw his easy 103. I'll say it again. Easy 103. He had a 2.63 ERA with the Toronto Blue Jays. So a lot of people wondering, uh, change of scenery, how's he going to do? He was great with the Jays after he was dealt over there. At number eight, Teoscar Hernandez. Can I just throw some at you? His 162 average for his career is 32 homers, 94 RBIs, 802 OPS. He's like an automatic 25 to 30 homer guy. He'll drive an 80 to 90. He played 160 games last year. I'm a huge Teoscar Hernandez fan. He's number eight. Number seven, best available free agents for just the 2024 campaign. I love Marcus Stroman. I believe in the Marcus Stroman of the first half of 2023. Ground ball guy. You need to win the marathon. He's a starter that fills in at number three in your rotation that gives you innings and he'll help you win the marathon by inducing ground balls. I love Marcus Stroman. And number six, you might be thinking this guy should be closer to number one. Jordan Montgomery to me is the perfect fit for Bruce Bochy. He needs to go back there. I've said this before. He's mad bum that smiles. That's what he is. He doesn't have to swing and miss the other guys do, but he's durable. He wants to take the ball and you know what you're going to get from Jordan Montgomery. At number five, Jorge Soler. I'm a huge Jorge Soler fan. Huge. And his his 162 average, 32, 84, 797 OPS. May I remind you, 2019, he had 48 home runs. And remember when Luis Arise was hitting 400 for a stretch last year? He was the MVP of that team in many people's estimation before he got hurt for a little while. Soler is number five. Number four, I know what you're thinking. Cody Bellinger, oh my goodness, Scott Boris thinks he should make $300 million. Wait a minute. Someone told me that in 2021, the guy hit 165. And then in 2022, he hit 210. I'm leery. If he goes back to the Cubs, I'll put him at number two. But I don't know where he's going to go. So, Cody Bellinger, I, I love you, but you're number four on Greg's list. Number three, Blake Snell. And we already talked about him. I, I feel like the right team, I'm going to soar him towards the top. I don't think the Yankees are the fit. I don't think the Mets are the fit. I think Blake Snell has a certain philosophy that that team has to embrace. If they let him be him, he'll be great. He's number three. This is a list of the best players for 2024. I love J.D. Martinez. And sneaky Hall of Fame highway guy. I'm just going to say that, okay? He's age 36 year uh, season, 162 average, 34 homers, 107 RBIs, 894 OPS, all-star five of the last six years. He only played 113 games last year. He had over 30, drove in over 100. J.D. Martinez can still mash. But number one on my list is Josh Hader. He's 29 years old. He had a 1.28 ERA. Last year, his career K per nine is at 15. Talk about Hall of Fame Highway. This guy's on it. Josh Hader is the number one free agent available, in my humble opinion, in terms of how you're going to impact the 2024 campaign. Now, I always want to give the real baseball ex experts here a chance to, you know, argue with my list, or maybe did I leave anyone out that you think should be on that? Uh, yes, you did. Who? Great list, Greg. Awesome. Thank you. I love the, you know, I love it. Love what you put out there. But you forgot a guy who is durable, who is important, that can play so many positions, flexible, but he shows up, he posts with Merrifield. Mm, okay. We should be talking I about, thought about him. And, and matter of fact, the Blue Jays could have did themselves a little bit more justice in making sure he was out there during the playoffs a little bit more. Is that you need his type of at bat? So let's just take a look right here. Oh, you didn't know Whit Merrifield? Not the biggest guy, but guess what? He can man first base as well. He shows so much versatility, so so many things he can do on the baseball field. Second base as well, he can hold it down. And you look at you, you know starts by position. 718 starts at second base, 181 in right field, 119 in left, 88 in center, 15 at first and third at sixth. The only place he hasn't played on diamond is short. But this is a guy, if your starting second baseman goes down, your starting left field go down, goes down, you need to give a guy a blow. He will post every single day. You look at his games played since 2018, and look at the guys in front of him. Freddie Freeman, 859. Marcus Simeon, 859. Paul Goldschmidt, 840. Matt Olson, 829. And after that, 
with Merrifield at 826. You want a guy who's going to show up, he's going to post, he's going to play, and he's selfless. He'll do whatever he needs to do for the team. He's a great teammate. All you hear is amazing things about him as a clubhouse guy. Whit Merrifield's a guy that you definitely left off this list, and he's a North Carolina boy. You know North Carolina oh, people. Yeah. Just good you people. You have an allegiance. Just good people. We have a little bit of allegiance. But again, watch him run it down in center field. There's not much he can do. And we didn't even show I, I just wanted to show defense because I'm a defensive guy, right? I made a lot of money playing defense. But we didn't even show his ability to steal a bag when you need it. He can steal a bag whenever you need it. One of the best base stealers in our game, even now at his age, Whit Merrifield needs a lot, a lot of love, and he's going to make somebody extremely good going into 2000. I really did think about Whit Merrifield. Thought I about truly it. Not, did. Not hard enough. But he's a super utility he guy plays. now. He plays all over the time. I love that about him. The other guys are like middle of the order-ish kind of bats. But guess what? A lot of injury on some of the, yeah, a lot of guys oh, with know, injury history on just that list. Just 2024. I'm thinking right. just 2020. Did I miss it. anybody in your, in your uh, I it. think you did. I think you did. I'm going to go to the other end of the spectrum. This is not a defensive guy. We're not thinking defense here. <laughs> okay. This guy Mash. mashes, okay? He mashes. And you know, the reason you left him off, probably because, look, his last year, 23, wasn't his best. That said, if you need someone to show up, you need someone left-handed who can hit a righty, who can put the ball out of the ballpark, this is your guy. Jock Peterson for the Giants in a huge ballpark has done very well the last couple of years in San Francisco. And to me, when you're talking about you need a DH, you need a left-handed DH, someone with power, I'm thinking the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm thinking there's a lot of other teams out there that could use a, t a guy like Jock Peterson. This is your guy that's going to show up and do it not just during the regular season, but this is one of the best postseason He's clutch. clutch hitters no, you're right. we and have right. seen, especially in recent memory. All those times he's come through for the Dodgers. For I mean, everything. The Braves. Remember when they yes, won a championship absolutely. with the Braves? People forget about that. The this guy necklace. rescued them. And just to show you, I know you think, look, 23 numbers weren't as good. 235, 416 slugging. Yeah, look, the, the exit below the hard hit rate, those didn't drop much. Yes. It's, his expected numbers last year were much better. A little bit unlucky. All I'm saying is he gets overlooked. We haven't heard about him, about him much. This is a guy who's going to have a big impact on a team that can potentially. Is he a full-time DH at the stage of his career? Yes, he is. Okay. And now, look, he can, you can put him in the outfield, but he's not a great outfield. <laughs> okay, okay. He's, he's not Cameron Maybe. He's going to mash he's, he's going in to mash. the big moments. I hear you. Uh, but and he's going to wear Josh, his little pearl like necklace. Young Josh. Josh Hader being number one, you guys didn't argue with that.